Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and by Metcalf Trucking Company. Today we sit down with Camden Fairview Cardinals head coach, Nick Vaughn. This Pigskin Preview is sponsored by First Community Bank. I'd like to welcome everybody in here to Hometown Sports' preseason preview here as we're going around the state interviewing coaches uh, with their football teams, getting uh, some really exciting information over the state, seeing who's uh, kind of going to be a contender, who's going to be a pretender. Uh, we've got Coach Nick Vaughn here with me today of the Camden Fairview Cardinals. Camden Fairview, y'all had a good season last year overall. Finished eight and five, four and three in conference. Uh, lost out to Parkview. Of course, Parkview is a juggernaut right now in the five eight um, in the playoffs there in the third round. Was that the semis in in five eight? Is is yes. it? Yeah. So semifinals, forty two thirteen. That was a tough one, but I mean. I think y'all played them regular season too, don't you? So yes. you lost forty. It was almost identical. Um, everybody lost that way. The part of you, <laughs> and they're they're a tough team. Talk to me about last team, last year's team, and uh, what y'all did well, and, and what you want to get better at. Hopefully, well, you know, we, we had a, um, now I would say a predominantly veteran team of kids coming back. Um, although we were breaking in a brand new quarterback last year, and and Darrell Atkins, uh, junior. I thought we, you know, we started off here pretty well against Arkadelphia. Lost a, a tight one to our tribal El Dorado, you know, that uh, I think it was a 21-20 game. Um, was disappointed that we didn't finish that one quite as well. Uh, we got shut out in the second half. We were up at the half, obviously, but, uh, you know, just didn't finish that one. Went on the road to Boonville, obviously a, uh, a very good football team, yeah. tradition rich. Uh Scheduled that one just with the idea of, hey, it'd be a, a great playoff environment, a very good football program, a tough team uh, that plays extremely hard, ever bit as much, and uh, we played well on the road, uh, won that one, and then we hit conference play about midway through conference play. Actually, uh, the week we played Lakeside, we were banged up, um, kind of the middle of our schedule where we were kind of shorthanded, started getting healthy towards the back end of the year. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't believe in moral victories at all, but, um, you know, the two games against, uh, Parkview, I thought we played well early. Um, there were one score games at the half. Um, you know, the wheels kind of fell off late in the third quarter in both of those games. Um, but I thought we played well early and we just got to find, Ways to finish, and that's so that's something that uh, we're working towards this off season, or have been. Um, is it, really focusing on finishing. That we'll continue that same uh, goal in the fall, as far as how we practice and things of that nature. Um, you know, we've got quite a few skilled kids coming back. We lost all eight O linemen that played from a year ago, uh, so we're rebuilding our offensive line. Um, you know, we lost some key contributors. You know, Jamari Lockhart, obviously, signs with UCA. Um, he'll be missed. Uh, we had, you know, several kids, obviously, O linemen and uh, uh, D linemen. Uh, Caleb Smith that signed with UAM, but, you know, we had uh, six or seven kids sign to play college football, so that's a good thing. Right. Um, so those are those are key seniors that we lose, but, again, most of those are our O linemen that, that we're missing out on. Rebuilding that this year is key for us. We've got we've had a pretty good spring. Mm -hmm. um, summer's been busy for the first month. Uh, you know we're getting ready. We're getting close to dead period, so uh, we got to finish out and have a strong July. Um, but I like the direction we're heading. Uh, like our skill kids, I like our mindset right now, and uh, you know we'll have a chance to to see if we can continue making making uh, deep runs in the playoffs. You know I've been here for two years. It's been my third. Mm -hmm. My first year, we um, we go we go ten three, make it to the semis. Last year, you know, we lose a few that uh, we should we felt like we should have won, um, which would have put us in the same ballpark of a record. 
And, uh, and again, we got beaten the semis again. So we're trying to get over that hump and finish at the back end of our schedule and uh, see if we can make a run to War Memorial in December. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, like I was talking about earlier, it was a really good season last year. Um, like you said, you know, trying to get over the hump, you know, trying to get a little bit deeper. But, I mean, semifinals was really good. You talked about playing Boonville in the non-conference, and uh, they're a really tough team. That team ended up winning state, uh, yeah. you know, 3-8. But still, um, great program there, very tough kids. You, it, one thing you can always say about Boonville, they're going to be tough. And uh, so that was a good test for you all. Good victory early on. Kind of got you all rolling a little bit in conference play there. Um, so, y'all, uh, your quarterback you were talking about, uh, was it Daryl Atkins Jr.? Yeah, he goes by Junie. Um, yeah. So he's going to be a senior now? He'll or? be a senior. Yeah. He'll be a second-year starter. Uh, really excited about what this year could be for him. I've seen him get – he's more athletic than he was a year ago. You know, he's 6'2", he's 190. Um, Good-looking kid. He's getting a lot of interest from some one to the A's uh, in, in Division two schools here in state. Um, just really excited. He, you know, he's a 4.0 kid. He's going to be top two or three in his class. Yes. Uh, so, you know, not only is he a good football player, but he's also an excellent basketball player and an even better student. Uh, great young man, uh, good leadership, loves his work. I love his worth ethic. Worth ethic. I don't know, even know. Right. Work ethic. He, um, you know, he does a great job of coming to work every single day, pushing the guys around him, but also just how much he's matured and understanding how to play the game of football. Yes, sir. Um, so you talked about your old line. You lost eight guys. So, kind of, how's that looking? Like, or how many? You got some young guys starting in there, or you got some veteran guys? Or it's their turn to kind of step. Yeah, up? a little looking? both. A little yeah. both. We've got um, three or four seniors that are competing for time, along with some underclassmen. Um, you know, we, we made a, made a transition with uh, one of our D linemen, Jordan McCoy, who's who last year. Played both DN and D tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, he has moved to to uh, tackle for offensive tackle for us. You know we like his athleticism, his length. Where um, and, and to be honest with you, he's gone from just being a, a, a good high school defensive lineman to a possible college prospect just because mm -hmm. of of changing positions and sometimes that can happen. Um, but we're excited about his growth and development because he's never really done it before. So he's really raw in that sense, but um, like his upside. Um, you know, we have several others. Uh, probably one of our strongest players on our team is Matt Reynolds, our center, who's looking at probably playing center for us. Um, you know, and then we've got a couple of young guys that, that have really come on. Uh, a junior, you know, Taylor uh, Scaife, who has done some really good things for us. Could play guard or tackle. Um you know, Carson Hill, who's a, who's a sophomore, and mm -hmm. you know, he's a big kid. He's he's six two, uh, probably two sixty, um, sophomore that uh, is going to compete for time. I think junior Robert Israel has done some really good things. He's probably one of our more physical all linemen that we have. Um, and, and none of these guys. And the biggest thing is none of these guys have played on Friday night. Right. Uh, not as an all lineman. You know, we. we we traditionally have played, uh, you know, we lost eight O linemen, seven of which, uh, eight senior O linemen, but seven of which uh, played quite a bit, whether in a rotation because of injuries or also we'll, we'll use them as tight ends um, just to create a different look, a different matchup. And um, we'll, we've had a, one or two of these younger ones that are seniors now that have kind of filled that. Matt's done some of that. He's played a little H-back, our center. Um, but otherwise, the rest of them, they've never played meaningful snaps at all on a Friday night. So it's the unknown that you don't know. But I tell you what, I, I, what I love about them is they come to work every day. Um, it's important to them. Right. Um, and, and they're only going to get better just because they haven't done it. And we've seen that progression through spring and mm -hmm. through the first part of summer. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Um, looked at your offense numbers last year a lot. And I think you had eight games, eight or nine, that you were over 40. I think it was eight. Um, looks like a pretty potent offense. Talk to me a little bit about the philosophy there. What, what is y'all's offense? Uh, you know, we're, we're spread. We're a spread team. Um, but we're going to take what the defense gives us from week to week. Um, you know, the last two years, we've we've had a really big offensive line. Mm -hmm. um, and so we turned – we had a tendency to, to run the ball more. 
throw a spread you out to run you just because we were so much bigger than most. And we were physical uh, at times, real physical at times. But, you know, like, for instance, when we finally started getting healthy towards the back end of our season last year, our offensive line really started coming together. Of course, it's not a coincidence that, you know, when you have really big kids, they tend to perform better in cooler weather, you know. And and so when the weather started changing, we started playing a little better as well. But, uh, I mean, we got pretty dominant in the run game towards the back end of our season. Um, But, you know, that's, that's only because, you know, of how we, how we play, how people try to play us and then what we can take advantage of, you know, uh, it could be totally different, you know, this year, uh, we, we could be, well, we may end up throwing the ball a lot more. Mm-hmm. And even then we still threw for, you know, probably somewhere between 20, 2,500 and 2,800 yards. Okay. Uh, I mean, Junie had a really good senior, a uh, really good junior year throwing the ball for a first time starter. He yeah, also he ran, you know, he ran for another, uh, 600 yards, I think for the year. Um, uh, the guy, the guy that really, um, yeah, and, and he's more athletic now than he was a year ago. Yeah, Whereas, um, you know, the, the guy that people pay it the most attention to is uh, our, our kind of hybrid athlete, Trent Haygood, uh, number four. Um, he's our jitterbug. We yeah. line him up at receiver, at running back. He, he Inside, outside, he returns punts and kicks. He had over 2,000 all-purpose yards last year. Um and, and matter of fact, you know, I say we got healthy. Uh, both our starting, our first and second team running backs were done for the year by week after after week nine. Mm-hmm. So we had to move Trent Tail back full time. And you know, he rattled off, I think, ninety seven yards against Parkview in week ten. First round, we go to Farmington. We're the four seed; they're a one seed, and he runs for a single game school record three seventeen. Oh. That's awesome. He turns around in the second round of playoffs. We go to number two seed, Southside Baseball. He runs for another 275. Wow. And then I think in the semis, I think he ended up with – I think he still ended up with probably like 103 yards against Parkview maybe. Um, yeah. Rushing. I mean, so, I mean, but that's just who he is. He's a, he's a very explosive player. Mm-hmm. He can do things that you can't coach. Um, and so he's – He's fun to he's fun to have on your team, and obviously he's somebody you don't like to defend. And so, yeah. uh, but he, he makes us better. The good news is for us, uh, we think we have we've added a few pieces here and there mm-hmm. uh, with young guys that are similar to him in some ways. Um, you know, we have uh, Red Robinson, um, sophomore. He's a sophomore running back that can kind of do a little bit of everything. You know, we have a Dayton Browning who's another sophomore that can kind of play slot receiver. Both these young men have, have similar tendencies, and you know we have, we have a little a little another jitterbug that's a, that's a junior on our team, uh, Mondo Caver, who you can't tackle in a phone booth. Uh, he's not bigger than a hiccup, but just really quick, really savvy. Uh, excited about things he brings to the table as far as just making you miss. Um, Will Hinton, he's a, he's a senior wide receiver who's had a, a really good spring. Um, Interested to see he was a rotational player a year ago, see how he handles being a possible starter. Uh, you know, we've had some guys with some some good springs and good summers, you know, just uh, interested to see how we can be. And, of course, you notice these are all skilled guys mm-hmm. that we feel really good about. Right. So, once again, don't know what we're going to look like in the fall offensively. We'll, we'll see. Um, but most of us, are, you know, our philosophy is going to be what we're going to take what the defense gives us. Um and just kind of go from there. One week we may throw for 300, the next week we may run for 300. I mean, it's just kind of how we've been here since I've gotten here. You'll, you'll um, do a lot of RPO in your we, we do We do some RPOs, um, but at the same time, you know, we threw for, you know, one like I said, one week we've thrown, I think we threw for almost 300 against Arkadelphia in week one. Turn around a few weeks later, we're rushing for 300. So yeah. you just never really know uh, – Right. What we're going to do from week to week based off of what they're going to try to give us. You know, a lot of teams are going to key in on trend. That's going to open up opportunities for other people. And what that, whether it's in a passing game or a rushing or a running game. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sounds pretty exciting. Uh, talk to me. We talked a lot about offense. Uh, first off, tell me, tell me, talk to me about your assistant coaches. Who's your coordinators? Uh, are you a offense coordinator, defense coordinator as well? Uh, well, what do you got? My OC is Lance Stone. He's been here for three years, four going into this one. Uh, he was 
the OC before I got here with Coach Monday. Uh, he stayed on, and he, he's continued to run our offense. Does a great job with personnel groups, um, formation of people to death, which is you know makes it harder to defend, um, which makes us just have answers. That's what I, we love, I love about it. Um, he does a really good job with our offense. Um, we have two co-coordinators this year. Uh, Wyman Johnson left us to go to West Memphis as our he was DC here previously. Um, so Chris Gregory um, is, is one of our co-DCs, and the other one is Christian Jefferson. Uh, they kind of split the title. Um, we have, we're we changing to an odd front this year. We've kind of been in a 4-2-5 the, the two previous years. Um, so, and we're doing so just because the type of kids we have. Right. Um, More long back. I, I think from, and I've said this to other people too, and I truly believe this, that, you know, we've got, um, I, I think this is, you know, going into year three, this is probably from top to bottom. The, the most athletic team we've had since I've gotten here. Nice. Um, just because of the line, how, how well our linemen move, and, and, as well as our skilled kids. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think that gives us uh, a chance, you know, to compete with the upper echelon still by looking, by even even by looking different, you know. Right. And so uh, we're morphing to an odd front some this year. You know, there'll be times we get, we'll have an even front, but – for the most part, we'll be an off front team. Um, we're really athletic on defense. We can run well the ball. Um, interested to see how some kids take on roles. Um, but uh, I, I really like our coaching staff. We're young. We're oh, energetic. Sure. Um, you know, we've had we've got guys that are South Arkansas based. That's what I really like about trying to be strategic and how we hire people, who we hire. People, people, people that are familiar with our kids, that are familiar with our area, because not everybody can coach in South Arkansas. Not everybody feels comfortable with it for whatever reason, good, bad, ugly, whatever you want, you want to call it, whatever your excuse may be. Um, but I, I want people that are from this area. Um, you know, I spent 12 years in Alvarado. I, I feel fortunate that I uh, had a chance to work for some really good people and Scott Reed at Alvarado, you know, Brad Bowling at Parkview uh, for three years uh, and just learning how, how to how to manage people, manage personalities, but also try to get the most out of the people around you. Right. And um, yeah, but we have a very strong South Arkansas feel. Uh, everybody that's on our staff has ties in some way to this area, whether because of where they play college or where they're actually from. Um, I'm fortunate enough to say that uh, off the top of my head, I've got uh, let's see one. Two, three, I mean, uh, three, three guys on staff that I coached oh, wow. when I, that were high school yeah. players for me, um, and, and you know I'm excited about you know those guys and their growth and their development, and then seeing them become men and how they handle their business, but also how they relate to kids and interact right. kids. Um, just really excited about that. Um, we have, you know, three coaches from El Dorado. We have a coach from Smackover and Alex Holt. Uh, who actually coached with us in El Dorado. Um, you know, uh, Travis going to go. Coach Gregory, one of our co-DCs, he's from McGee. Uh, even though he's coached in East Arkansas, but he's from McGee. Um, you know, Coach Jefferson and Coach Davis and Coach uh, Deal, all three from El Dorado, talked about that. Uh, coach Turner, our D-line coach, he's he spent a lot of time in South Arkansas. He, he was he, Most of his life he was raised in El Dorado for most of his life. Coach Roberts, our running backs coach, he's from here. He's from Camden. Nice. Um, he was an All-State player here. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, just really excited about those those things wow. that the direction we're going, how we're moving. Um, and I know I'll probably miss somebody, but just, you know, really like the direction our staff is. We're energetic, but we're more importantly, we're, we're, about, we're about kids and how we can impact kids. That's nice. Uh, sounds like you've got a lot of continuity. you got three former players on your staff. Got other guys that have been here. Um, you, the, your, uh, was it your running backs coach we were just talking about that's from here, played here. Um, and like you said, you know, all these guys are got some type of ties to the South, so they understand the kids in this area. I think that's huge. I think that really helps build just the culture, you know, further along. Um, really uh, exciting to hear everything I'm hearing from you. You've talked a lot about your uh, 
kind of moving to the front, um, to the odd front and everything. You're more a little, a little bit more athletic on your, your linebackers maybe. Uh, um, and we talked about it with the, with the offensive linemen. A lot of those guys you were saying were kind of H backs or they've worked their some tight end and stuff. So would you say you might be a little bit more mobile this year, even though you were, I know you were big and those guys can move last year, but do you think you might be doing a little bit more pulling and stuff like that? Uh, I know we spread. It's possible. Uh, I, you know, I don't know that um, – I would definitely say we are defensible. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're long, athletic, rangy. That That's the body type that we have on defense. Um, our offensive line is still, you know, not our fastest bunch, but we have – we're physical. And, and you know, I, I, we're still trying to figure out exactly who we are right now with those yeah. guys uh, because – Honestly, I mean, even now, I mean, we just went to a team camp yesterday at Whitehall. Uh, I mean, it's June 14th, so that was the 13th of June, uh, literally the the second week of, of summer. And we've been to three team camps, and we're still rotating probably about nine guys on the all line, just trying to figure out what that combo is. Yeah. So, but, you know, we, we're, we just uh, – the unknown of that position is so unique, but – for every, but as far as everywhere else, we are definitely uh, rangy. We're athletic. Um, you know, a prime example is we, we have uh, a set of brothers on our defensive line, and they're all one, one is a little heavier than the other, but the the one that's smaller is a, he's he's a lot more athletic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those two guys can run. And that's the Duhart boys. Uh, you know, our defense. Is led by you know two of our more athletic kids. Uh, you know, basically the quarterback of our defense is Ronald Buchanan. He, he's played free safety here. He'll be a three-year starter at safety for us, but he also plays receiver. Uh, Malik Musa Dennis, outside linebacker. Uh, both those two guys kind of run the show for us defensively, getting guys lined up. Uh, and they're two of our more athletic people that we have on our football team. Mm -hmm. um, really excited about direction we're going with those guys and, and you know we have a few others that are going to make a name for themselves as first time starters and just excited to kind of see how their athleticism plays into what we do defensively um and and you know i, I just like i said and I, I keep repeating it to, to people that will listen and say we're athletic we can run kevin's always had athletes here yeah uh, we've been fortunate in that area um but this, this is one of the more athletic teams that we've had how that translates, I'm not real sure, but right. we're still kind of figuring that out. But I, I just really like the direction we're going. Yeah. I like this football team. What are uh, – when you're early on you're trying to still figure out that O-line and like when say when we get to the season, what are maybe some things you can do offensively to kind of – you know, sometimes you get like a, a young quarterback, you bring them in, give them a screen pass, some handoffs, kind of get them in the flow. Are there a few things you can do like that with offensive line or is it just – Yeah, I, I think so. Um, kind of soften them up. I mean, I think anybody – any offense basically has – say, hey, these are our must plays. These are our – this is what we're going to hang our hat on. Yeah, at the yeah. staple. What's going to be – you know, are we going to be a gap scheme team? So it's probably going to be power. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're – you know, maybe bug sweep if you're – you know, or something like that if you're a wing team or, you know, whatever. Um, and so I think what, what's our day one place? What should we know from the jump? Regardless of what they do, we got to be able to run these plays. Basically. And so I think you, I think that's where you start with offensive linemen is give them something that they're comfortable with, that they don't have to think, but they can just react and play hard. Uh, and that's the, the main idea that you want to try to do is kind of get them comfortable. And, and you know, well, what most coaches are probably going to say, hey, we're going to run the football because we want we want to create a, an identity with those guys, um, make them physical, but also set a tone for what yeah, we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. And so it takes the thinking away from it a little bit. And, and then you can kind of settle in and worry about some other stuff. Yes, sir. We've talked a little bit about uh, your offense, your defense, your, your coaches. Um, tell me a little bit of you, – you've mentioned it a little bit already, but uh, you read over it for 12 years, right, in, uh, under Scott Reed. And uh, you know, got multiple state titles going there. Um, where did you uh, go to high school at? So I, I'm originally from the Pine Bluff area, lived in Pine Bluff most of my life, uh, went to Whitehall High School, um, ended up going to Fayetteville for a stint, and then finished at Henderson State, ended up uh, getting on staff there for a few years, um, 
left there and went to Forest City with Scott Reed uh, back in 2006. It was our first year there. We read for two years, um, helped kind of get that place going, rejuvenate again. Uh, we had to have three years in a row, I think, winning three games or less. Mm-hmm. In our first year, we won seven. Uh, but that was back when everybody was 5A. That's back before we started transitioning. Right. And so we were, yeah, we won seven games. We were awarded playing Northville Rock in the first round of playoffs. <laughs> and, uh, and they were up rolling then. Yeah, back, yeah, absolutely. They were really, really good. Um, but uh, we ended up leaving there. When, when uh, Coach Reed took the job at El Dorado, I was fortunate to go with him, uh, coaching linebacker, special teams, that kind of stuff. And, um, well, obviously, rest is history. You know, our first year, I think we won six games, got beat in the first round by a really good Sylvan Hills team. Um, year two, the magic starts. You know, we we got we go to the set or we go to the finals in 08, get beat by Lake Hamilton. We return in nine, ten, and eleven, went three in a row. Uh, 2012, where um, we get beat by Greenwood in the semis at Greenwood. Um, kind of thought that. You know, we had a tough place we, to win it. Yeah, it's a tough one place to win. Of course, we gave, that was Drew Morgan's senior year. Yeah. Um, there was a, you know, a debatable call on a on a possible fumble, incomplete pass that from quarterback, you know, hit kind of thing that would have completely changed the game. We were up and, yeah. but, you know, here or there. Uh, they ended up winning. Uh, we returned to the state championship in 2013, went at the end. Uh, and then, of course, 14 through uh, 18 seasons, um, you know, I, we're competitive. Uh, we don't return to the finals, but we're, we're either in the quarters or semis. Um, probably not. And some of those teams were not quite as talented as, you know, the long run we had, uh, but we were competitive and we always found a way to be in the thick of it right. in the playoffs. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's extremely impressive. I mean, other than that, one play we're talking about at Greenwood, I mean, there's a chance there, if not for that, that you yeah. can win five in a row. You could, which yeah. Is unheard we, yeah, of, yeah. Really. You, you could win five in a row. And I mean, to win it four out of five years is still, I mean, you can go back and look in the, the you know, the archives of Arkansas, you know, sports, and you, you're talking about teams like Pond Bluff going on those types of runs with Brazil Shabazz in the early 90s. And, um, I mean, Parkview's in the midst of things right now, but, uh, you know, obviously, Bentonville's had some moments and, Horseman Northside back in the day, yeah. but uh, that's that's up there is uh, really impressive. Greenwood, of course, always in the mix oh, the past 25, 30 years now. Yeah, no so. doubt, no doubt. We, you know, I ended up leaving there uh, when Coach Reed took the Cabot job. I, I went to Parkview uh, to kind of help Coach Bolden continue to rebuild that program. I was DC there for three years. Yeah, well, I probably um, we probably streamed the game because we did a lot of Parkview. Yeah, uh, y'all may have streamed the game. My last year, uh, we beat – I think y'all were streaming when we beat Greenwood at War Memorial. Oh, yeah, we so called that game. And, and uh, uh, that's when they they had the quarterback. They, yeah. they had a bunch of injuries, and uh, they yeah. ended up starting a kid that by the end of the year was really good. Yeah, know? I mean, they, they their quarterback was hurt, and they went with a backup. Everybody else was healthy. Oh, and, yeah. But, I mean, they were really good. Were really good we, we just had them. We were playing really well. Uh, oh, it was quarterback crazy. comes back. We see him again in the semis at their place, and they beat us in a close one. Um, but just being a part of that, that rebuild and see it kind of take off like it has, I mean, it was a tough place to leave. Uh, last class that I was around is this year's upcoming senior class. Right. Uh, they were freshmen then. But, you know, uh, Marion and, yes. and Nelson, they were both playing as, as freshmen. Uh, matter of fact, we, we moved – Man, man up to after the, his ninth grade season was over with, and he played the last five games that year. And I think he had like five picks and three touchdowns yeah. or something crazy like that. Yeah, they're, he was just really good. They have an unbelievable group right now. Yeah, really well. good. And the even best part about it is they're really good kids. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just been real fortunate to be around a lot of good people, mm-hmm. learn from them. They poured into me. That's, that's what I try to do as head coach is try to help prepare my coaches for the next step, whatever that is, whether it's a position coach as a coordinator, uh, a coordinator to a head coach, um, but also the same thing for our kids, you know, trying to help them become, you know, it could be coach speak or whatever, but, you know, whether it's uh, leaders of men, right? We want Because not everybody's going to go play nobody, you know, how many people can we count on one hand that are going to go play uh, 
professional football. How many of them are going to play college ball? The average is 3%. We've been fortunate last year. We had, you know, six or seven guys signed. Year before that, we had one. So, you know, we have some college prospects on our team this year, but not all of them are going to go be a professional in sports. Obviously, they will in life. Hopefully, they can be uh, positive citizens, uh, yes, future husbands, the fathers, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah, really good stuff you're, you've been telling me here today, Coach. Um, talking about Barkley, that's kind of an interesting thing. You come over here now, and, I mean, by the looks of it and everything, you know, now coming out from under that tree a little bit with Bolton, you know, now they're one of, you're one of the toughest teams to come against, which Camden was a good place already. Um, it's tradition rich, but uh, y'all are uh, definitely doing some really good things. Um, very competitive, made it semis last year and, and got a lot of returning skill guys this year. So a lot to be excited about here. Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.